Kathy and Jeff back again. We're back to talk with you about Unit 2, Earth's Place in the Universe. We have a plethora of resources for you to use. Plethora? Yeah, a plethora. <laughs> when you go to Atlas, the Atlas site, Unit 2, you'll see that there are transfer goals, and that these include describe Earth's position in relation to the moon, sun, and stars. Two, explain why the Earth experiences day and night. Three, predict changes in the night sky and shadows throughout the day. And you'll also see that we're working with two standards for this unit. The first is that the sun is a star that appears larger and brighter because it's closer to Earth. For this video, however, we're going to show you some activities that focus on the second standard. Use a model to communicate Earth's relationship to sun, moon, and other stars and explain why people on Earth experience day and night and B, patterns and daily changes in length and the direction of shadows over a day, and C, changes in the apparent position of the sun, moon, and stars at different times during a day, over a month, and over a year. If you look at the resource section on Atlas, you'll find activities, informational text, PowerPoints, videos, and the HSP chapter alignment. It's chapter 13, Earth, Moon, and Beyond. The chapter does a good job of explaining the phenomena and introducing vocabulary. We're going to talk about a few of the activities to do for this unit. The first one can be done on the gym, on the playground, or even in a classroom if necessary. Start with a whole class activity. Put the basketball, or in this case, beach ball, in the center of the room as the sun. Tell each student that they are going to be the earth and form a big circle around the sun. Model for them how to rotate on their axis, imagining a line going from their heads to their feet. Model revolving around the sun. Have the whole class spin on their axis and walk around the sun at the same time. Let's show the teachers what we mean by that. So let me be the sun. I'll be the earth. <laughs> okay, so go ahead now, Jeff, and show, you're gonna model for the students, what does rotation mean on your axis? So the rotation on my axis would be going like this. So now day, night, night. And, and day, day. All right. 24 hours. So you've hours. got that imaginary line from your head to your feet rotating around, okay? The next thing that we want the students to understand is revolution. Now this is a really difficult concept for students. I think they get rotation, but revolution is hard. Yes, so how would you model the revolution for the kids? So revolution, I'm going to travel around the sun like this. And that's going to take me 365 days to make that trip around the sun. Okay, great. So if you were trying to show rotation and revolution, what's that gonna look like? So now, here's my day, and I'm going around the sun. So he's rotating on the axis, 24 hours, day and night, and revolving around the sun, 365 days or one year. Now, be careful with your students. If you have a whole classroom full, they might get a little dizzy and silly, so maybe you want to model it with a few kids at a time. But that's a great way to start to show them rotation and revolution and build a foundation for the next activity. Great. For the next activity, have four students work in groups. For each group, you'll need three different size balls. For example, a basketball or beach ball, a softball, and a ping pong ball. The basketball will be used to simulate the sun, the softball will be the earth, and the ping pong ball is the moon. So Jeff is referring to softball and ping pong ball just so you can have a relative sizes, but we're showing you here styrofoam balls that we get at the craft store because you can put the stick on this for students to hold it, and in a minute we'll show you how to really model that location of the axis. One student holds the basketball or the sun. This student stays in one place and doesn't move. The student holding the softball or earth moves or revolves around the sun. Use the model for a rotation on its axis. So that way the students are gonna spin the earth and revolve it around the sun. So we're kind of doing rotation and revolution, just like we did when they were standing as the whole class. Exactly. Okay. 
Teach that the earth is slightly angled on its axis and that the axis is always pointing in the same direction as it makes this trip around the sun. So I'll help you make your Thank trip you. around the sun. So notice the axis is always pointed, not at the sun, but at the same direction in space. So as earth goes around rotating on its axis, this is how we end up with our seasons. It's the angle of the sunlight that causes us to have summer and winter, not distance from the sun and not pointing toward or away from the sun. Big misconception for our students. Now, if you call freeze and the side of the earth facing the sun, that's the side that's experiencing the daytime. And you can mark the ball as well, put Worcester on the ball. Okay. Um, we'll show you another activity that reinforces this idea in a bit. At the same time the earth is going around the sun, the moon or ping pong ball is going around the earth. It takes approximately 29 days to go around the earth, and this is approximately a month. This is the reason for the phases of the moon. Now we said that there were four students and we've talked about three, but the fourth student is observing and recording what's happening with the other three students. It's this student's responsibility to synthesize these ideas. Please switch roles so that each of the students has an opportunity to be the observer and the, the parts of the model. This is the kind of activity that you'll need to repeat over several days and over weeks. It's really abstract. It's very difficult for kids to own this. So we recommend you try this activity several times, switch up the roles, let them really know what the motion of the moon is, the motion of the earth and how the sun is fixed, okay? So we've included a few graphics here to help your students really understand the concepts. In this first image, you'll notice that the Earth is tilted 23.4 degrees on its axis. The side of the Earth facing the sun is in the day, and the side of the Earth facing away is experiencing night. This rotation takes 24 hours. In the second graphic, you'll notice the reason for the seasons. As the Earth revolves around the Sun, the axis is always pointed in the same direction in space. However, take a look at June 22nd, summer in the Northern Hemisphere. The axis is pointed what appears to be toward the Sun, so it is getting the more direct rays of the Sun. Longer day length. If you look at December 22nd, winter solstice, the axis still pointed in the same direction is now angled away from the sun, so we have less sunlight and shorter day length. In the next image, you will notice again reason for the seasons, spring, summer, winter, and autumn, the solstice being the longest day of the year, or the shortest, and equinox being 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night at the equator. In this next graphic, you will notice the relationship of the Earth, Sun, and Moon. This is showing that the Moon revolves around the Earth and together they revolve around the Sun. This is why we see the phases of the Moon because it takes approximately 29 days for the Moon to rotate and I'm sorry to revolve around the Earth and for Earth to revolve around the Sun is 365 days. So moving to our third activity, the next one is really going into um, exploring shadows. So in this third activity, you're going to try to take the students out and repeat this two or three times during the day. Um, this obviously works best if you can go to a playground area with um, asphalt or blacktop, somewhere that you can um, use chalk and make a recording. So you're going to have the students work in pairs. One person will stand, and you'll see a shadow for that person, and the other person with chalk is going to trace the shadow and explain that you're going to come back later in the day to see if there are changes. The student tracing should start by tracing their partner's shoes. They should also record the name of the person and the time of the day on the ground so that they come back to the correct shadow. If time allows, partners switch and the tracer becomes the traced. Before you head back inside, ask students what they think will happen when they come back out. So return to those shadows later in the day, make observations, make some measurements, and draw again, maybe with a different color chalk could be a suggestion. 
um, notice the changes. And then when you go back in the classroom, several open-ended questions you could start with is, did you um, notice any changes? What looked different? What do you think caused the changes in the shadows and how could you explain it? Now be very careful here because students are going to say that the sun moved and that caused the change in the shadow length. And that's what it looks like when we look at the sky. The sun looks like it's in a different position, but in actuality, it's the, um, the change in the position of the earth as it moves around the sun. Our angle of light changes day and night very hard concept for students to understand. So bring them back that the sun doesn't actually move. It appears to move because the earth is rotating on its axis. And so then you want to discuss the observations, return to the shadow activity over the course of a week, maybe do it in another month, do it in the winter. And of course, it's always fun to bring it back to Punxsutawney Phil. I think that's in February. We know right. if spring is ever going to come. <laughs> Lastly, a quick activity to try is to print the world map that's found on the Atlas site. Now, it should span the length of a few pieces of paper. Mark Worcester's approximate location on the map and have a student wrap the map around their waist. Shine a flashlight while the student rotates around the sun. Have other students observe day and night. That's a, that seems like a great way to bring this concrete back to the students. Um, so do use these activities and the other resources on the Atlas curriculum site and try to assist students in understanding these very big um, abstract topics, but such a good foundation for so much study of Earth and uh, space science as they move on. And, you know, science matters. You know, Kathy, I was up all night wondering where the sun had gone, and then it dawned on me. Living on Earth might be expensive, but at least you get a free trip around the sun every year. Well, fifth grade teachers, we hope that you um, enjoy Jeff's puns and come back to watch our videos for units three, four, and five. I, I guarantee there'll be some more comedy. Yeah. Take care. Have a good year. Bye-bye.